So I've had several people ask me over the years, why does a machine have to have a bobbin? So they've seen machines like this one that operate just fine without a bobbin. And you've heard me talk about small bobbins and large bobbins and the fact that if you have large bobbins, you don't need to change them as often and that's a good thing. So if you didn't have to change them at all, that would be even better, right? The main difference between a sewing machine that uses bobbins and one that doesn't is the type of stitch that it makes. A machine that uses a bobbin is gonna make a lock stitch. If a machine doesn't have a bobbin, then it does not make a lock stitch. It might make a cover stitch, it might make a chain stitch, but lock stitch sewing machines use bobbins. So right here I'll just advance the machine by hand so that you can see that it makes a loop that goes around the the bobbin case and then the machine draws it back up, draws it tight and that makes a stitch. Here's the hook. It's a point. It'll grab the thread off the needle. So it goes by, just barely misses the needle, and it's grabbed that thread, and now it's making the loop bigger and bigger until it's big enough to get around the bobbin. Okay, here's the feed dog. I've removed the throat plate. The green thread, that's the bobbin thread, and the thread in the top is going to be white. One other thing I want to show you before we get started is right there is the tip of the hook. That's what grabs the thread off the needle. Now the needle comes down with the thread and the hook comes around. Right there you can see the hook coming around. You can barely see the loop of the thread off the needle and the hook grabs that off the needle. So right now it's just hooked. I want to back it up a little bit. There's the loop and the hook grabs it. So now we can see two legs of a loop that are around this hook. And as I advance this, you'll notice that one will go on top of the bobbin and one will go under the bobbin. And also watch this string, you can see it moving out as the loop gets larger and larger. So the, the thread deploys and makes that loop larger and larger. One leg goes around the top of the bobbin case and the other leg, which you can just barely see, under there is coming underneath the case. And that's made a loop. Now the machine is drawing the loop back up. And maybe here you can see that it has gone around the green bobbin thread completing the lock stitch. So in order to make a lock stitch it takes two threads. You need the bottom thread and the top thread. The hook comes around, grabs the thread off the needle and makes this loop. And that loop has to be big enough to go completely around that bobbin. Now that might look somewhat large to you on the screen but if I were to put a spool of thread next to it, try to imagine how big that loop would have to be. So the engineering that would have to go into making a hook big enough to go around that giant spool, it would make a machine much bigger, it would vibrate a lot more. And another thing to consider is the number of times that a thread would have to go through the eye of the needle before it was finally inserted into the fabric. So I'm going to try to mark this thread to hopefully uh, illustrate kind of what I'm talking about. So one, two, three, four, five marks on that thread. And now uh, I'll just advance the thread. You can see the thread's going down through the material. And all five marks have, have gone down through the material now. 
and they've gone around the bobbin and now they're coming back up through and so those have gone through the fabric and the eye of the needle one time so we'll do another stitch and they're back third stitch and they're back maybe one's about down to the material now So four five still one mark coming up six I can just barely see it there seven and so I would say uh, in this example that thread went through the eye of the needle seven times and that's for this size of bobbin now if it had been the giant spool instead of just uh, a couple of inches of thread being deployed each time it could be maybe a foot of thread to get around a big spool like that so once the thread goes through the eye of the needle uh, a dozen two dozen or more times the thread would be worn out and frayed and weak so hopefully I've answered the question as to why bobbins it has to do with the type of stitch and the physics that go into making that type of stitch be sure and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified every time I post a new video thanks a lot for watching my video if you liked it give me a thumbs up